What's up everybody, Sam Smice here. Today I wanna to talk about using the Groove Pool in Ableton Live. The Groove Pool is something that I have underutilized over the years, but recently, because I have been making a lot of tech house, I have been trying to use the Groove Pool a lot more because grooves, especially in your drums or like your basses or leads, having some type of groove is very important when you are doing tech house. So let's just jump right into it. Now the grooves in Ableton contain information such as timing and velocity. And you can use these groove files to apply timing information, velocity information to MIDI clips, as well as audio clips. To access your grooves, when you open up this side panel in Ableton, you will see this little wave icon, this circle down here. You've got two of these waves. Click on this and this will open up your groove pools. And when you start loading in grooves, you'll see the grooves pop up in this section here. Now to access some of the grooves, I can go into the grooves in the categories and I can scroll through all of the different grooves. This is a list of all of them. I personally have not created any of my own grooves. These are grooves that came with Ableton, stock with Ableton. You can access the grooves in this panel or if I just go into packs under the places and I go into core library, then there is this folder with the grooves. I can open this up and there are grooves for percussion. If I open up this percussion, then if I have some kind of MIDI that's maybe like a bongo, uh, a bongo progression, then I can add in maybe this bongo accent percussion groove. And you can hear when I click on it, it plays these little clicks that are mimicking the groove and you can see that there is some velocity information in this groove because some of these clicks are quieter or louder. And then there is some timing information as well in this groove. And if I click on this headphone thing, then it will play. If I have that turned off, they won't play. Let's just go into like a swing groove. I'll go into basic and let's go to a 16th note swing. You have these swing 16th notes. There's 52 all the way up to, let's see, 73. And that's like, almost the intensity of this swing. Let's just try that. So I'm gonna drag it into my groove pool. I just clicked and drag it. If I just double click, it will also pop up into my groove pool. Now I have those swing grooves. Let's try some other ones. Let's go to style. And let's try just putting in like a bongo groove in case we wanna use it. That is a 16th note one. Maybe I can try like an eighth note one as well. Let's go ahead and click on this 16th note 59 groove. And I'm gonna to go to this MIDI clip. And in this MIDI clip, I just have a straight 16th note pattern. No groove or anything. Let's go ahead and just loop that. Now to apply a groove, I can select on this groove and click and drag it on top of my MIDI and that applies the groove. And now you can hear some timing variation. I could also open up my clip and go to this clip menu and you have grooves here. If I open this up, it would say none and then I could scroll down and select these different grooves. So this was that first one. Let's try the second one. Let's try this bongo one. Uh, let's try this shaker one. Probably not gonna do much on that eighth note one. So this 16th note one, let's go ahead and just select this swing 16th note 59. Now you can see there is this bass, quantized timing random and velocity. So bass, you can select different bases for this groove. Now what it's gonna do is, it's going to look at every 16th note in this groove, and then it's gonna compare those 16th notes to the 16th notes that I have in my pattern. And then it's going to arrange my notes according to those 16th notes. So it's gonna like move them proportionally to those 16th notes. If I have something like an eighth note, then it's gonna look at the eighth notes in that groove and then arrange my notes proportionally according to those eighth notes. This is a 16th note groove. If I just want to take a look at this groove, I'm just going to drag the groove into an empty MIDI track. And now I can actually see 
what the groove pattern is. So if I take a look at this groove pattern, let's look at the MIDI of what this actual groove pattern is. So it's on C1, and if I take a look at the eighth notes, they're almost exactly on beat. You have these 16th notes, which are the ones that are offset. So if I were going through my bass and I had something like eighth, uh, one eighth note, it's gonna look at the eighth notes in this groove and it's not gonna change my pattern because it's looking at these eighth notes and these eighth notes are exactly on grid. So you can hear that my MIDI sounds exactly as it did before I applied this groove. It's gonna put it on a 16th note. I can also use this quantize. So if I played my MIDI, I actually just wrote my MIDI in here. So there it's just like exactly on beat. If I played my MIDI and some of these notes were like a little off like this, or even like with audio clips, cause you can apply grooves to audio clips, you can quantize the audio or the MIDI clip according to the space. So if I had this at 100%, it's gonna quantize my original MIDI. And let me take down this timing to zero. It's gonna quantize my MIDI to one sixteenth notes. If I have it at an eighth note, it's gonna put this at zero. It's gonna quantize my MIDI to eighth notes. So it's gonna quantize it before it applies the groove. I don't really need any quantizing on here because I had all my notes just like straight on grid. So this timing is the amount of the groove it's going to apply. So if I have this at 100%, it's gonna apply 100% of the groove in this groove file, 100% uh, of the timing of the groove in this groove file to my file. And put this on 1 16th. We have this randomness, which applies a bit of randomness to the timing. And you have the velocity. And in this groove, this is a groove file. There isn't any velocity. I'm looking at this velocity section. There isn't any velocity in this groove file. But if I look at this, but let me check out this bongo one. Let's see if there's any velocity information in this bongo. So you can see some velocity changes in this bongo groove. Some of these notes are, are varying up in the velocity. Let's go back to my original pattern. And I will apply the bongo. And this bongo is mainly about changing the velocity. You can hear that the timing isn't really changing. So if I increase this velocity, you can hear some of the velocity changes. Now let's say I really like the groove that I found and picked for my clip. I can go into this groove. You have a hot swap option, so you can quickly hot swap between grooves and test them out. But there's this arrow button, which prints the groove to my pattern. So let's go and head back to this swing. Let's say I really like that and I want that to be applied to my clip. Then I can hit this arrow and then we can see it being applied to my clip and all my MIDI adjusts. So you can see some, now the MIDI is offset. Some of these notes are a bit longer. Now the groove has been applied and it no longer sends none. So you don't necessarily have to apply the groove. Like you could just have it in this uh, menu turned on, but if you do wanna apply it and see what it's doing, then you can do what I did is just hit this arrow and then it applies the groove. And let me just undo that. So I'm gonna control command Z that. Now let me adjust this pattern. Let's say I have, let's just make my own groove. So I'm doing this without, without listening to it. Let's go ahead and just do that. Maybe I'll adjust some of the velocities like this, making it very different. So let's say I have that pattern. Maybe I played that pattern and I really like the groove that I played. Then what I could do is I can right click on this MIDI file and I can extract the groove and I can create my own grooves doing this. So if I have this MIDI file, I'll extract the groove. And now in my groove pool, we can see it just says saw. That was in the name of the MIDI file. I can rename this. So let me rename this to Sam Groove. Let's do 16th note um, one, I guess. 
I could maybe put the BPM in there. So maybe I'll do maybe I'll do one twenty five, and then I can hit this save button, and then I can save it into my grooves folder. And then let's say I have a lead groove that I really like, and then I want to apply that groove to another song. Then I can just uh, save it like I just did, and then apply the groove to another song. Let's say I have some kind of hi-hat pattern that I really like, then I can apply that to a, another song. So let me give you an example of where I could extract this groove from an audio file. Let's say I have this audio loop, which is like a break. And let's say I really like that groove of this break. I have the warp mode turned on, and let's go and just put it onto beats because it's kind of like a drum loop. And you can see that it now looks at like all the transients, like it just estimates where the transients are. So you just have to put some trust in Ableton that it, it kind of recognized the correct transients. What I can do now is I can do the same thing. I can just right click on this uh, break file and let's do extract groove. And now it's going to extract the groove depending on how long the file is, depends on how long it takes. So for this file, I believe it's a little, I could have maybe just like chopped it and, and selected part of it, but it's gonna take a little bit longer because this file was, uh, let's see, 16 bars or so, so kind of long. Now we see in my groove pool, I have this breaks groove and I can do the same thing. I can save it if I wanna use it for something else. But what I could do now is I have this cool groove from our breaks and I could go into Let's say I have like a really boring hi-hat loop. Let's go and just check out, I think I put a hi-hat loop in here. Here's like an 808 kit hi-hat. So something you would probably hear in like Tech House. A 16th note hi-hat loop. So here is my MIDI file. And let's just go and check out what the MIDI is that it pulled from this breaks file. Let's see what the MIDI looks like. This is the MIDI the from the groove of that breaks file. And it looks like it pulls some information from like the velocity. So the velocity is changing. We have some of the timing, not, not too much variation of the timing. So mainly going to be some velocity changes. So let's go and just apply this breaks groove to my hi-hat and let's listen to what it did now. A little variation on the timing. Let's go ahead and hear what the velocity changes it can do. So a lot with the velocity changes. Let's go and take this down. Let's go ahead and just put a kick under that. Maybe an open hat. Maybe I'll take down the timing because I just want to, oh, I like the velocity changes it's doing. And let's listen to it without that groove now. Turn the groove back on. So now you hear this like really nice groove to that 16th note hi-hat pattern where it would have just sounded like very stale before. And this is a, something that you can do with a lot of your top loops and hi-hats, especially with Tech House, because when you're making these, you're probably just like putting a hi-hat on the upbeat, uh, putting 16th note hi-hats, and then not really thinking about like adding in a groove, but this is a, an easy way to add in a nice groove is just to put in these groove pulls. And I can now have this like cool breaks groove and apply it to various hi-hat patterns. Now everything that I've done, I've been doing in MIDI. I have this hat loop, which has a bit of groove on it already. It's a 16th note hat loop, but let's go ahead and uh, apply a groove to this hat loop. So I'll apply the breaks groove to this hat loop. Let me put my warp note on beats. Experiment with the warp node, uh, warp modes, because I don't know which one's gonna do best. Uh, it really depends on like your audio file that you're working with.
and that one is a bit crazy there. So let me just take down the timing. And I put that velocity at about 23%. Let's listen to it with the kick and the open hat. Now, and let's take that groove off. So yeah, a little bit more interesting putting on that groove. I like it a lot more now. So that's all that I really want to go over for the groove pull. I hope this helps you make your next track more groovy. If you enjoyed this video, please go ahead and give it a like and also please subscribe to my channel if you are not yet subscribed. And if you'd like to check out any of my senior preset packs, head on over to store.sansmires.com.